Hello, beautiful people. It's Quinton from the Hunters of Light, and uh, we've got Roger Machen from Canon South Africa with us today. Um, as everyone by now should be aware, we've got uh, the Macro Month as, uh, as the theme. Uh, we've already seen some fantastic creative showcases, uh, Lizette Abbott and Kate Yonker, uh, two really, really good examples of, um, of macro photography, one on land, one uh, underwater. Uh, so I think it's quite a good spread. Uh, we've got a, a, another one coming up on Monday, which is going to be fantastic. Um, I'll, well, you'll have to wait and see that one. Um, but today, what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about uh, the gear that uh, Canon South Africa provides for uh, macro photography. Um, and I know you know you can you can go out you can you can shoot uh, with with you know pretty much any gear. But if you really want to you know up your game, take it to the next level, there's there's a couple of things that um, that you need to look at from a, an equipment point of view, be that a, a, a proper macro lens, uh, extension tubes, uh, the, the diopters on the end, um, and then from a lighting point of view, uh, you know, where do you take it from there? I mean, especially if you are shooting F16 uh, and, and something that, uh, that you can handhold without, um, you know, <laughs> losing the, the, the control of the camera, um, you know, you, you need to add a bit of light into that. So I thought, perfect opportunity to get Roger in and um, give a bit of a rundown on what uh, Canon has to offer. So Roger, over to you. Welcome. Good to have you on again. Good morning. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah, all good. All good. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, and and th thanks for hosting us. Uh, you know, we, we, we like being part of Hunters of Light and um, I hope you guys are uh, enjoying the fact that we're sort of, um, you know, throwing some lenses at you guys and uh, helping promote a bit of photography and uh, exercising some of your muscles. Um, yeah, the, the 100 mil uh, macro that we uh, put up put up this month certainly seems to have provoked uh, a, a flurry of activity. Um, I'm really excited. That, that That's really cool uh, to see a Absolutely. lot of people sort of jumping on the bandwagon as far as that's concerned. I was, uh, uh, I was really on this cool. morning and uh, and had a look at uh, the images that are on there. Oh, there are some killer images. Um, I just yeah. uh, also put a post up to say that, um, you know, right. there's, there's a couple of uh, days left where you can still upload your image. Um, and uh, yeah. and stand in line to win that lens. I mean, that's a fantastic macro lens. I mean, as a as a, a, a starting point uh, in your your macro journey, that would be absolutely fantastic. Well, well it, is, it is indeed. And uh, you know, macro macro is one of the things that we found has been uh, very 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 popular for a, like, a couple of years, and uh, which is why Canon has had such a uh, an extensive range of macro lenses over the years, and um, we've done some very very creative stuff. Um, as, as far as lenses for, you know, whether it's the mirrorless crop sensor, whether it's the uh, full frame, whether it's the EFS DSLRs, uh, or even the, you know, the brand new full frame uh, mirrorless. There's, there's, there's new, uh, there's macro lenses in, in all of those categories, which is quite, quite interesting. And and you, you've also, we, sorry we, to interrupt, you've also got one of the, the, one of the lenses that's actually got a built in light um, for that yeah. uh, macro photography. Absolutely. And my intention was to have one right next to me to show you. Um, it's in the cupboard over there. So, you know, in a few minutes, we'll do a talk amongst yourselves while I go <laughs> over there and go get it. But um, yeah, we, we could talk about ma macro photography in general, you know, without having to show pictures and things mm -hmm. like that. But yeah, absolutely. Um, for, for a lot of people, macro is, is a very, very interesting thing. Once they start um, getting further on their uh, photography journey, uh, it's something they kind of realize fairly soon that they want to try and play with. Uh, and it's something you can do at home. And that, that's mm. the beauty of macro photography. It's not, it's not something you can sort of go out and, and, and find somewhere to shoot, you know, like bird photography, for example, or wildlife. You have to go somewhere to do it. But macro is something that uh, you can do at home. And whether it's insects, whether it's flowers, my gosh, the soap bubbles I saw this week was like, Amazing. Ooh, I, hey. ooh, I want to try that. You know, um, Absolutely. The world in a well, bottle. if you do want to try it, um, Ian Haggerty has um, uploaded a tutorial um, on, yeah. on how he does it, the, the setup, uh, the lenses, the lighting, uh, and also his uh, secret mix to make uh, those fantastic bubbles. So if you haven't seen the tutorials yet, guys, yeah. go and have a look. Uh, Ian Haggerty's just uh, uploaded one. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I look at that and I go, that's unbelievable. I cannot believe that a, a little bit of soap and glycerine uh, oh, sorry, Ian, yeah, okay, yeah. where the secret? Um, a little bit of soap and glycerin <laughs> can um, can can create those 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 patterns and colours. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, it is indeed, absolutely. Yeah, 
Anyway, so so let's have a look. Um, you know, there's there's normally sort of three or four different options when you start going into uh, macro photography. Some of them are dirt cheap, some of them are quite expensive, but it's all very dependent on how how serious you want to go to. So um, we're going to start with probably the the easiest and the cheapest, which is uh, essentially extension tubes. Um, now Canon makes three different ones. We'd make an EF12, an EF25, and an EF50. And this is this is a 25. It indicates the distance. Um, between the uh, the body and and the bayonet of the the lens that you're going to put on there. Now, realistically, because it's an EF mount, you can put any. Uh, it'll fit and work on any EF lens, and you can uh, put it onto pretty much any EF or even EFS body. Um, to to be fair, you could also put it onto an EFM body with an adapter, and also uh, onto an RF body uh, with an adapter. Now, what that essentially does, it just it basically moves the the lens further away from the body and it changes the focal range of a lens. So a normal lens like a 2470, for example, would focus from about a meter to infinity. When you put the extension tube on, it changes uh, the focal range down to about 20 centimeters to about two, three meters, something like that. Um, there may well be some situations where you'll still get infinity focus, but it's very dependent on the lens that you actually put on right. there. And optically, as you saw, there's, there's no glass in it. so. However good your your lens is that you put on there is going to be the quality that you get uh, as as you know you know through through the extender uh, sorry through the extension tube. Now these, these are fantastic and and as I say um, you can do a whole bunch of things with, with these. The EF12 has the slightest uh, amount of adjustment. The EF50 has the biggest amount of right. adju adjustment. So the 12 you know converts a regular lens into a bit of a macro. The 25 is very, very versatile. That's the reason why I, I own one, um, because it, it can do macro and to a certain degree, what we call micro. Uh, right. And then obviously the 50 will turn, turn a lens into a micro. What it will also do, it will also work with macro lenses as well to further enhance how close you can get. And I was playing with that with the, the 100 mil macro and uh, my focus was pretty much on on the front element of the lens. That's uh, that's how close you, you're getting. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so the extension tubes are, are relatively well priced. You don't necessarily, oh, God, dare I say it, uh, have to buy a Canon branded one because there is no the, the, there are no optics in it. So it's not really going to affect the optical quality. Um, so there's quite a few third party options on, out there. And that's probably one of the easiest, cheapest ways of, uh, of getting into into macro photography. And just let's just uh, spend a couple of seconds on um, macro versus micro. You know, in macro, yeah. uh, in my understanding, is is when it's a it's a one to one representation on the sensor of the of the image uh, of the, the 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 creature. So it's it's life size. Um, and then m micro would be where let's say it makes it a five to one. So it's five times the size of the the the, the creature in in real life, which I, I assume is is yeah. where you start getting those. Those sort of um, fly eyes that look like um, you know those sort of uh, baking things where you shake out the flour. You know, I mean, that, yeah, I don't understand. Yeah. That is amazing. I, every time I see that, yeah. I'm just yeah. amazed by it. I, I don't think there's a specific terminology, you know, that, that that's sort of used by the industry. But yeah, you, you know, you could be very very right in terms of um, what you're saying. You know, approaching one to one. One to one it means exactly as you say, the same size on the sensor as it is in, in real life. And that's what's known as a one to one. So if you get a one to one lens like the, you know, the 100 mil macro, um, you know that what you're seeing and what you're getting are absolutely identical size. But, you know, the, the sort of macro term is, is, is kind of vague because uh, all it essentially does, uh, you know, if, you're, if your lens is labeled macro, it just means that the standard, for example, on a 35 mil lens, the standard close focus is a meter. Mm -hmm. If you're lens can actually focus less than a meter you're you're okay to to label it macro and, okay. and that that's you know there's no as i say official cast in stone standard that everybody uses but it, it's sort of the, the the um the understood kind of thing and as you quite rightly say over one times magnification uh most certainly would then take it into into micro env environments um and, and again the, the five times is is very rare there's literally only one lens on the market that does that, which is the the Canon MP65, that not only has a one to one, but it can also go to uh, five to one all the way through that 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 range. Um, it's a downright flipping nightmare to use. I'm going to say that without even thinking twice. And uh, we'll get into a couple of things you'll need for for, for doing yeah. that. But um, quite quite rightly, 
you know, that that is most certainly a micro lens. But there, there are also things like you know adapters where you can uh, strap a camera onto a microscope and uh, and use a microscope to all intents and purposes to go sub, you know, right. <laughs> you know sub micro, <laughs> and you're getting just crazy magnification there. Um, and that, th- those are pretty damn interesting. But you know, let, let's stick with standard standard yes. range. <laughs> yeah. Let's get the basics right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right. So um, the other thing you were talking about was, was about a, a diopter on the front. Um, I don't know if that's quite the right term because um, they're, they're either known as close-up lenses or close-up mm-hmm. filters. Diopter is traditionally the, the thing you put on the, the viewfinder at the back ah, to adjust okay. for whether you wear gla- glasses or not. But there there is a number that is attached to it. So you'd often get it like a plus one or a plus two or a plus mm-hmm. three on, on a close-up lens or close-up filter. So it, it's also, again, very dependent on the brand, very dependent yeah. on the company that makes them. But but close-up filters are often, or close-up lenses are often what um, people buy to, to get into macro. Now, here, here's an example of one. Uh, this is a Canon uh, 77mm close-up lens, the 500D. Um, we I don't know if we're still making these. There, there's a couple that we, we made and a couple that we... Uh, we discontinued, but we had a 250, a 250D, a 500, and a 500D. And the D just indicated that it had a special coating on the, on okay. the, on the front elements to eliminate reflections. Now, what essentially that will then do, that screws into whatever your lens uh, that you have, uh, a, a standard 2470 or whatever it is kind of lens, you screwed the clo- close-up filter or close-up lens into the front element, and you're able to, to focus a lot closer. Now, obviously, because it's an additional piece of glass on the front there, the quality of this will then affect the quality of the photo. Right. So if you have a really good L-series lens and you put this this filter on there, uh, a Canon 500D coated lens is actually very, very, very good and substantially expensive, make no mistake. So it's not necessarily L-series label, but it, it, it delivers very, very, very good quality for an L-series lens. Um, however, you know, third-party brand lenses maybe not necessarily made to the same standard. You know, the, the cheaper you buy, the less, the, you know, the more the quality is going to be there. But there's also um, lots of luggage that comes with that, and more often than not, it's to do with sort of distortion at the edges of the right. frame. You know, vignetting, vignetting in the corners. Very dependent on the focal lens. Very dependent on the brand. So there's a lot of things that come into play as as far as close-up lenses or close-up filters are concerned. And as I say, uh, you can do so, you know fairly fairly cheap stuff. And and get some crazy crazy good results depending on how you know how, how good you are and how much you you sort of understand you know your what quality loss you're going to get, but um, the more money you spend, the better you're going to get at the end of the day. But again, determined a by the existing lens you've got and by the filter. So you can buy a stupidly expensive filter and put it on an eighteen fifty five kit lens. It's not going to turn that lens into an L series, you know. Exactly. It's just it's so, going to make yeah. your it's going to make a creature bigger, um, but yeah. um, you know uh, you may not necessarily get what you're looking for. And I mean that's that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. You know whatever you're putting um, in front of the camera body is going to determine the 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 the, the quality of the end uh, result image. Uh, things like color, mm-hmm. contrast, sharpness, etc. You know if you've got an L series lens like the that the new RF hundred uh, mil. Um, you know, yeah. fantastic contrast, color, etc. But if you put, uh, you know, a, a cheap, um, uh, you know, filter on the front of that, that's really just going to negate everything that um, that you've spent on um, on that lens. So that's definitely something to bear in mind. But yeah. again, as you say, uh, you know, let's let's assume now we're we're we're, we're starting out. We we you know we just want to get a creature with an eye that's the size of a soccer ball. Um, you know, uh, and let's, let's start with that. And then once, once we've got a couple of those shots, then we can say, right, you know, maybe, maybe I need to look at a bit of, there's a a sharpness thing that I, that I can't uh, work out why it's not happening. And then, and then interrogate it from there. But yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's at all, everything that you put in front of that lens or in front of that body is, is going to determine what the outcome is for sure. Absolutely. Uh, And then uh, there's another thing that's, that's also a known entity called a reverse ring. Uh, now, Canon actually doesn't make one of those. Uh, and what a reverse ring essentially does, it, it sort of it goes into your standard sort of bayonet uh, over here, it locks into the bayonet, but it's got a, now a filter thread on that. And what you then do is you will then mount the, the lens uh, back to front. And essentially mounting a lens back to front will then convert it into a macro lens. And again, it's determined by the quality of the lens you've got. Now, um, Obviously, if you buy a reverse ring with a filter thread of 67, 
it'll work on your one lens that's got 67. If you then you know, change to another lens that's 58 or 77 or 82, whatever it is, all of a sudden it, it doesn't work. Now, ideally, you've got to sort of have a good idea of the bayonet size uh, diameter of your, your camera. So a standard EOS bayonet is around about 48, 49 millimeters. Uh, the new RF bayonet is about 50, 53, 55, that sort of area. So if you've got a filter thread that's 82, for example, the lens that you screw in the front there, that reverse ring isn't going to use the benefit of that entire lens. So try and keep it right about the same size uh, as the lens you're putting on there. But um, one thing I will say to you, um, you know, the, the, most people spend a lot of money on buying uh, protective filters for the front elements, uh, you know, whether it's skylight, whether it's UV, whatever yeah. the case may be, to protect the front element. And yes, you know, it is a good investment because, you know, in protecting your front element is a good thing. We we would always recommend, you know, you, using the lens hood um, is, is far more viable for protection. Uh, you know, if you're worried about walking and bumping, you know, the lens against, you know, grass or whatever it is, the lens hood's going to provide a lot more protection. And it most certainly improves the quality of the image mm. by eliminating things like micro contrast, which is, ah, you know, for the pixel peepers out there, it, it is a thing. Um, the, the front element filters, I would say, not necessarily as critical an investment um, as people have a tendency to think. The front element is relatively well protected. If you've got an L-series lens and brace yourself, couldn't because this is going to hurt, you can actually, they've actually got uh. fluorine coating. So they, um, oh, geez. <laughs> they, 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 they normally sort of, um, the fluorine coated lenses, uh, this is not one of them, um, <laughs> and the majority of the new L-series lenses have got fluorine coating, which eliminates things like fingerprints, et cetera. But it is relatively easy and, and uh, to, to clean and to, to wipe off. And more often than not, you're actually not going to see that in, in a photograph. Even if I have a fingerprint on there, it's only if you're using depth of fields, you know, upwards of F22, number one. And number two, if you've also got light coming in from an mm. angle, those, any kind of marks or scratches on a front element will actually render as flare. Overwhelmingly, um, if you use a hood and you've got a scratch on your front element, the odds of you actually seeing it are kind of slim. But... The rear elements, and these are the ones that are more critical than anything else. And it's one of the things that they don't teach at photography school, and uh, they don't really sort of uh, tell you in a lot of places, you need to protect that rear element. The rear element is more critical in terms of image quality. Any scratch, any mark, any dust, any dirt on that rear element, there's a very good chance you're going to see that in the photo. And that's the thing I would say needs more protecting. Now, when you use a reverse ring, um, that yep. rear element is now exposed to the world that it's normally not exposed to and i would say to you be very 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 careful if you do use a reverse ring the other negative thing is um you have to shoot wide aperture because if you're using one of the uh electronic bayonet or electronic mount lenses whether it's nikon canon sony whatever the brand is um the electronic diaphragm uh defaults to open so when you're shooting as a, with a reverse ring it'll, it'll be wide open so if you really want to go there, you know, you can buy um, secondhand old mechanical lenses, um, where, whether you buy it from a, you know, bid or buy or online or, you know, one of the, the, the camera trader type sites. Uh, as long as it's clean, it doesn't have fungus on it. Um, you can often buy really good um, old, you know, vintage Canon, Nikon, whatever brand lenses. Uh, and you just, you know, screw them into the reverse ring onto the lens, onto your camera. And then you'll have a mechanical diaphragm as you right. click you will actually get, um, it doesn't have the same effect on depth of field, like if the diaphragm was this way, this way around. Um, it does impact depth of field, but not as well. Mm -hmm. What it essentially does, it then does most certainly uh, reduce the amount of light coming in so you can get a better exposure. Yeah. But you might actually find it doesn't have that same depth of field impact. And um, you'll also start seeing diffraction start coming in. So something right. of the image pretty much very quickly, and only because that diaphragm is now right at the front rather than you know, right at the back of the body. Okay. So, yeah, a couple of things on reversing rings. Yeah, they're, they're nice and they're cheap. You know, that that's the crazy thing. I've seen them as little as 100 bucks, you know. I'm just going to say, yeah. don't do not do it. Um, I mean, you you know me. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, you know, when, when I see someone that's that's selling gear uh, and they've got their lens, you know, standing with no, no end cap, no, uh, you know, cap in the front, it's just there. I'm, I'm, I'm already sweating for them because 
you know. Uh, but anyway, that's that's a different story. <laughs> I, I yeah. knew I could trigger you. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Well, yeah. So, what, the one final thing, obviously, was the you know the dedicated macro lens. So, right. if, you, if you if you want to go that route, that that's obviously the final um, thing that's where we say to people: if you really are keen on macro, if it is something you really want to do, then go out and buy a dedicated macro lens. And uh, depending on you know the, the bayonet, depending on the size, uh, you can get a variety of different options. Uh, now, obviously, a very very good point is lighting, and if you will. Talk to the people for a few seconds. I'll dash and get that other lens very quickly. And um, over to you, Q. <laughs> I told you it wasn't far away. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so, so Canon started doing some things uh, a short while back, which was... Um, building uh, LED lights into um, the lenses. And, and one of the first ones that came out was uh, the EFS 35 more. Now, um, really fantastic little lens, really, really did handy to use. Uh, and it was designed for the EFS or the crop sensor cameras. You can't really use it on full frame. But what you essentially have, and let's hope there's some power on here, uh, is the fact that you've got a, a light that you can actually turn on the front of the lens. And just by pushing a button, you can select just one, half power and off, or uh, he says completely trying to see whether it's happening or not. Uh, for crying out loud, I think battery's flat. But anyway, um, you have the option to have both lights at full power, both lights at half power or off, or one light at full, uh, one light or oh, half or off, or vice versa. And you can actually sort of play with those different settings. Um, it really is a, a cool thing as far as lighting. And then you've got lighting right at the source, um, which is really, really good. And because it's LED, it's not like a flash where there's a bit of a, or not sure what I'm getting, not sure exactly what the result's going to yeah. be, you can see immediately on the viewfinder um, what that is. Um, we then added to that on the um, the EFM bayonet. Now, this is for the uh, the, the crop sensor mirrorless cameras. This is the 28mm 3.5. And as you can see, that's got exactly the same uh, lights on the front there. And this is, these are quite popular, believe it or not, amongst uh, dentists, that kind of mentality, because um, it's easy enough to do interdental and intradental photography, I learned those terms, um, because you can actually see where it's going to, right. and you can see ex exactly what the result is. Now, um, the traditional uh, photographers out there, the traditional dentists out there, will want to use um, a ring flash. Now, you're going to hold up the ring flash I learned to you a couple of days ago, because um, there, oh, Jesus, so you would have to do this, a, a dash one the here. in the background. <laughs> no, no, I have it ready. So, yeah. so once once you once you've 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 outgrown the the flash on the lens, um, you can yeah. then if this will focus, you can then take it yeah. and no, it's not going to focus. But you know, you could then no, put a, a an ex. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, it's an MR. ex lens. Um, uh, I mean, uh, ex flash. <laughs> yes, this will be edited. Those days, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Um, cut. Um, yeah, and yeah. then you, you you can upgrade to you can upgrade to one of these, which is, gives you a bit more power, a bit more control, yeah. etc. Yeah. So just, just to be one hundred percent clear, this is not a flash. This is just a light. So it's a fixed right. light source. Um, that the, the ring flash is exactly that a flash. Now now that one you're holding there is the MR fourteen EX, and um, Canon is very very clever in their model numbers, or have been in their model numbers of flashes for the past to indicate a guide number within that um, within the model number. So a speed light six hundred is a sixty meter guide number. Speed light 430, 43 meter. Now the MR14 is exactly that. It's a 14 meter guide number. And a lot of people have got a bit of confusion about how that actually works out. You know, 14, uh, 14 meters as a guide number is what your uh, flash power range would be at 100 ISO at 1.4 uh, as an F stop. And that's not necessarily something that's as clear to a lot of people. Mm. And what you need to know is when you go from F1.4 to F2, your 14 meters becomes seven meters. F2.8, you're now at three and a half meters. At uh, F4, you're now 1.7. At F5.6, you're at about uh, you know, 80, 85 odd centimeters, uh, that sort of area. And then at F, uh, where was I? F8, something like that. Mm. At F8, you're, you're still at about 40 odd centimeters. Now, if, you, if you're doing macro work and you're finding that your 
you know, this close to your subject and you fire the flash at F8 and it's like totally and utterly blown, um, you have to understand that you know, that's because of the flash power and you have to adjust the flash power. And, and learning ring flash is one of the, the hardest things that a lot of macro photographers take some time to, to, to get their head around. You know, above and beyond the fact that the ring flash is right next to the lens. And yes, your lens might be seeing this, but your ring flash is on either side of that. If you're this close to the subject, there's a very good chance your flash is, is going past and, and sort of, you know, missing the subject completely. So ring flashes are actually more for when you're further away from the subject and, and there's no lighting or you can't control the lighting on the mm. subject. Um, you can still do macro work, but, but work on that kind of premise that... Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what ring flashes are for. And if you, if you, and I see a biggest mistake from dentists that they're trying to shoot from this far away with a ring flash, and one flash yeah. is firing off there, the other one's going into the mouth, and their f stop and their focus point, and everything's wrong. It's like, ah, you know, Absolutely. dial the power down on the flash, and you know, take your your f stop up, and you know, leave your ISO down. <laughs> and and I think what what we should do is we should do a, a, a bit of a, a masterclass on exactly that guide numbers. Um, you know, uh, how, what, <laughs> where, et cetera. You know, I mean, uh, I, I, you know, we've, we've discussed this many a time. I'm, I'm not a technical photographer. I, I come from the school sure. of the seat of my pants photography. Um, you know, if, yeah. if it's, if I shoot it and I, uh, you know, it doesn't work, let me try something else. Oh, oh that's cool. Um, I don't know how I did it, but, but yeah. that works, et cetera. So, uh, and I think a lot of people, yeah. when it comes to flash, they just go, no, and put it down. Um, but no. but you can you can put a speed yeah. light on your camera um, and get fantastic results, or the same speed light, same camera, same everything, and it's rubbish. But it's just because yeah. of, of understanding how to use it, where to point it, um, and and that sort yeah. of thing. So I definitely think we should look at a um, you know we've been chatting about it. We should look at a a, a speed light yeah. guide number. <laughs> you know, uh, let let me sweat right. a little bit because it'll freak me out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 brace yourself because it, it, it is, as you say, uh, it is quite, quite simply either as technical as you want it to be or as simple as you want it to be. And the overwhelming mm. majority of photographers will take a shot. The flash is too bright, uh, either close the f-stop or, um, you know, dial down the power of the flash and they'll get a shot that they'll, they'll, they'll then go, okay, that's fine. And they're like, you know, why is the background black or, mm. uh, why, why have I got orange lights? Why is the background orange? Why, you know? And it's only through practice, practice, practice yep. that they start getting settings that they're comfortable with. And then you put them into a weird environment and all of a sudden their settings that they're comfortable with are completely oh, different. So exactly. Yeah. There, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot to flash photography. Okay. So, you know, going back to, to that ring flash, um, there's a lot of controls that you can do not only on the flash itself, but also from the speed light menu on the camera itself. Uh, there's a ton of different custom functions you can start playing with in terms of, you know, front, first curtain sync, second curtain sync, high speed, uh, et cetera, but also in terms of power ratio. So if you've got an inordinate amount of light on the right and very and pretty much nothing on the left, you can actually sort of dial up the power of the flash on the left uh, and use use the, the one on the right as slightly lighter. Um, but then again, there's a lot of other things that come into play. And, and when we start talking speed light, when we start talking mm. flash, you you all the the first lesson you have to understand is that it's about balance. Whether the flash is the light, whether the daylight is the light, or whether you're trying to find a balance between the two. And those ratios, oh my God, that's the, the you know the the ambient light. I mean ambient not yes, necessarily yes. daylight. But um, yeah, that's most certainly where you want to go to. All right, Absolutely. so one, one step up from that baby when you get really, really, really serious about macro uh, would be this baby. This is the MT26 Twin Flash. And um, what you essentially have with this is a flash unit that slides into your hot shoe as normal, and then two little units that will either that'll mount onto a ring that, that clamps onto the front of your macro lens. And what you then have the option to do is to then do a bit of tilt in and out. As, as there's a little bracket over here that, that tilts from side to side. You can also do a rotate uh, on while it's mounted on the front of the lens. So tilt, uh, tilt and rotate, etc. But also the added advantage to be able to handhold up to mm. about sort of 60 odd centimeters away. Uh, so you know, 
ca camera uh, as set up as normal, focus as normal, and then start playing with the flashes and the light output. Um, as I mentioned, this is a 26 guide number, so there's quite a substantial amount more light on this. And we actually find quite a lot of people using these for um, things like sort of uh, even bird photography in cages, but insects and snakes and things like that, where you can't necessarily get as close but you need to illuminate. You need a little bit more creative lighting. Mm. Um, this allows this allows you a lot more options. But well, you know, make no mistake, it, can, it comes at a price. So. Absolutely. Well, that was one of the things that, that I was going to say. You know, the uh, this for me feels a lot like um, on camera flash pointed straight at the subject. And 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 the, mm. the where when I've played with it, I immediately don't like it because because of of that yeah. sort of feeling. Whereas. Um, you know the, the 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 one that you just showed us now, um, that that allows me to look at well, I, I want the light to come from a little bit from the top, and this one a little bit below, uh, and and you can start yeah. positioning. You can even backlight using that because you know it, you can actually yeah. hold it further away. So for me, you know that is definitely. Uh, you know, as you say, it's more expensive, but it's but it's also where you start taking your 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 images into the, the next level, where it starts yeah. looking yeah. like a bigger production, a more expensive production. Uh, you know, yeah. and it, it's just going to just take it to the next level. Well, for for sure, and and to be fair, I mean, you could do that with that ring flash as well. I mean, it's not just locked in and lights yeah. it side to side. You know, you can you can rotate you know throughout the circle, and you can adjust the power up but from left to right, you can also take that ring flash off and hold it. You know, it's a little bit shorter cable. It's only about sort of yeah. 30 odd centimeters, but you can actually fire it from the side. So um, it, it's entirely up to you how creative you get. And and this is a thing that uh, becomes quite a, you know, it's, it's up to you. And it, it also then goes back to the other device, which I thought was lying here, but it's not. But things like the, the speed light transmitter. Um, whether you get the STE2, which is the infrared transmitter for the older generation flashes or the STE3 RT, which is the radio transmission for the new generation flashes. What that means is you don't have to invest in, an ex in, in a macro flash or a macro light, but you can use the transmitter to be able to take your, your flash uh, off camera. And again, doesn't have to be the, the wireless radio transmitter Canon device. You can get third party devices, but you can also get cables, you know, an off camera right. cable. Uh, is most certainly uh, it's always a, a, a good investment anytime where you're taking you know flash uh, away from the sort of lens lineup or you know higher away, up or further away you're going to improve the quality of your flash photography but we, we're kind of moving off to a tangent here but yes, what yes. that essentially means is that um if you for example get yourself a light tent now again i've got one of these kicking around here somewhere a light tent is essentially like a little triangle pop-up type of thing that's got translucent white sides to it and you can put a whole bunch of different devices or products or items inside the light tent and then you just fire flashes or even have led lighting from a variety of sources to illuminate the subject inside and because the, the walls are white but translucent they work as great big you know sort of diffuser soft boxes anyway so firing the flash from the side you, you, you're not even going to look you know it's not even going to look like a flash it's mm. quite, quite interesting and those are relatively inexpensive, and it's a good investment if you really want to get start getting creative. Absolutely, and and that that sort of um, brings up a, a, another uh, option that we haven't really spoken about. And it's, it's probably it's not it's not the sexy macro subject matter, but you know from from a photography business point of view, product photography, um, rings, mm. small pieces of jewelry, etc. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's great to go out yeah. and, and, and shoot insects, etc. But very few people are going to buy an A2 or an A1 print of this beautiful, uh, you know, uh, fly that's uh, sitting on the wall and looks fantastic. Uh, yeah. But there are a lot of clients out there, uh, local jewelers, craft jewelers, who um, need the, the their goods photographed. Um, so yeah. that's when the, the the macro side of things uh, can be used in a in a more business type environment. Um, so and you can money, make yeah. money out of it, uh, and 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 then progress through it. And as you say, whether whether you have um, the uh, the what is the model number for that one? ST twenty six. The T twenty six. There yeah. we go. Um, you know, whether you use something like that, or or you take your speed lights and you use it through, uh, you know, a, a, a light box, light tent type of scenario. Um, the macro lenses really they start um, earning their keep and um, and will yeah. earn you some some cash as well. So that's definitely something to look at if you if you're trying to think yeah. of what macro lens do I get, or it's a bit expensive for for a little hobby. 
you can make money from from using your your macro equipment absolutely yeah for for sure and and you know people will always need product catalogs whether it's you know an actual book form or whether it's you know on on a website you know the, the, the quality of the product photography uh, will often determine people's opinions on on the product itself, Absolutely. and uh, can can make or break a product. You know, it's it's quite a simple thing, and that, that's one of the things that um, that, as you say, uh, a macro lens can turn into a very very good investment if it pays for itself to you know sponsor your hobby and and uh, absolutely you know learn, learn your skills with you know with the filters and the you know the extension tubes first and uh, when you can start doing that kind of thing man mm. it, it really is good I, it is dog work i will say that I, I remember doing back in film days yeah. um a, a, a catalog a shoot for a a, a a company that made cigarette lighters a company called mink and um, they, they they sent me a, draw, a, a box of five thousand different <laughs> lighters, and they needed a photograph of each one uh, in six days. Oh. So, and and you, you can imagine what that's like on film. So you know we had to shoot the first roll of film um, to get the lighting right, to get the, the the shadows and everything. Send that for process, then get the film back, and then okay, make the adjustments based on that. Once we had the lighting and everything perfect. Then we could just start shooting and yeah. shooting. You're taking 30, 36 products, you know, change it, put it in, change it, put it in, change it, put it in. And um, yeah, that was 5,000 cigarette lighters in six days. Yeah. And, and you, you, people sort of don't really realize how much work that actually is. But at the end of the day, the customer was fantastic. He had a slide, slide, you know, high resolution quality slide mm-hmm. image of every single product in his catalog. For him to go and send that to Repro was 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 perfect, and uh, again, you know, obviously digital now makes life a lot easier. Oh, absolutely, because yeah, you, know, you can start tweaking and changing your lighting and, and playing with your setup. But um, you know, there's a need, uh, and, and regardless of you know what the product is, the smaller the product, the more more likely you are to, to make a bit of money from it. So yeah, absolutely. So there's a there's definitely a business case to support your hobby. Um, I think we'll yeah, we can yeah. look at it uh, like that. Yeah. All like right. It, yeah. So that was very yeah. cool. Thanks, Roger. I appreciate it. Um, Thank you. Yeah, no, absolutely. and um, yeah, I, I think we'll we'll schedule that um, that uh, guide number flash speed light, uh, speed light uh, discussion um, because I think a lot of people will be quite interested in that. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I understand it, but I, but it, it makes my head hurt. So um, maybe yeah, maybe yeah. We, we can find a way that uh, that I can understand it <laughs> and my head doesn't hurt, and you know, we can just walk away happy. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, Thanks, no, absolutely. And there's, there's, there's a lot of resources online for things like that. Strobus.com is probably one of the mm-hmm. best ones. And um, if you really are keen on learning more, you can go there. But, you know, it's, it's pretty hard. And, and again, one of the hardest things um, to do proper training or a proper presentation on flash photography is actually going out and shooting the shots that show the different mm. effects. So here's the same subject, same distance, same flash, same settings. Now we're changing ISO up. Now we're changing shutter speed down. Now we're changing depth of field up and down. Yep. Those are the things. It just takes an inordinate amount of time to actually go and get those pictures because you you struggle to see what the impact is without actually seeing the photo. Mm. But we'll put some Absolutely. work into that. Uh, brace yourself. I think we've got a shoot plan. Um, yeah. <laughs> cool. No, that's yeah, awesome. No pressure. But I, I do like the idea. And as you say, we, we've got a couple of flashes on our lineup. And uh, it's always good for us to, you know, Talk flash to get people to buy flash. Mm. But, um, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and no, that's awesome. Talk macro, but buy macro. <laughs> Links below. See what we do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, Whatever. Cool. Thanks, Roger. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, I'll chat to you soon. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for all the support you've uh, provided uh, to uh, the Hunters of Light. I know the the, yeah. the giveaways for the prize winners is it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, you know, it's it's fantastic to have a brand that uh, that supports the the, the community. Uh, it'd be great to have um, you know the rest of them on. Um, obviously, not so great yeah. for you because you know. But anyway, yeah. uh, that's that's a different discussion. But, but again, I, I really I, appreciate th- it. Yeah, th- thanks for providing the forum. You know, th- this is the thing that um, I, I struggle with in a lot of places uh, around the world. That you know, a lot of these kind of things are are paid for uh, opportunities. And uh, I mean, you started this out of the, 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 you know the goodness of your heart, and it was a free thing, and. Um, I, I just I just wish more people would get involved and, and more brands to to all intents and purposes. I don't mind sharing 
the space with other brands because it's good for the community. Mm. And I'm trying to lead by example because what I see and what you've got, you know, a captive audience of over 3,000 uh, photographers, whether they're intermediate, advanced, enthusiast, beginners, or pro, it doesn't matter. I want to talk to photographers. Mm. And, you know, what 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 better showcase to, to do it than, than something that's organic, it's South African, and it's just out there to, to help people. Um, it's not a blatant sales pitch uh, from, from my side, which is, is something I, I've always loved. And I think, as I say, as long as you're doing this, I, I'm going to do my damnedest to, to keep uh, supporting. And onwards and upwards, wait till you see next month's prize. Mm -mm. Yeah. You, you, yeah. Shh, shh, yeah. No. All right. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, the. As always, thank you. It's a pleasure. The, the, just uh, on that, I mean, the, the Hunters of Light has always been about uh, educate, motivate, and inspire. Um, it's it's uh, can can we say brand agnostic? It, you know, everyone is welcome um, as yeah. long as you educate, motivate, and inspire. That's it's as simple as that. So um, again, huge thank you to you. I know it's 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 greatly appreciated. Both the, winning the, the 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 lenses for for the photo competitions, but also um, you know the 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 A two prints that the winners receive that are printed yeah. on the the Pro one thousand, which is an amazing amazing yeah. printer. I think we we're going to be uh, yeah and um, that there behind me, um, <laughs> and and we we're going to be chatting to uh, to an amazing photographer. Uh, next month is it? Yes, it is next month. Um, about yeah. uh, printing and the Pro One Thousand, so that one we'll we'll put yeah. up as well as soon as we've done it. It's going to be Fantastic. really exciting. So yeah, cool. Yeah. We we said yeah. before well, we started well, this. Final thing. Congrats yes. to um, Kim Kim Stevens on that yes. uh, architecture shot. Uh, I hope you've got your prints. I, I sent you a glassy and a mat. Um, it's quite interesting how that difference, uh, those two images turned out um, between the two different uh, paper formats. But mm. um, I hope you like the print and uh, enjoy. Fantastic. Thanks, Roger. I appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of the day and yeah, we'll chat to you soon. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks, Major. Okay. Bye. Yes. Yeah.